20 years ago, Her Majesty the Queen and President Mitterrand inaugurated the Eurostar service between London, Paris and Brussels. Today, some 10 million passengers come through St Pancras International. The diocese in Europe is here to welcome this particular train, the 9.57 arrival from Brussels. this train is our newly announced Darsom Bishop, Canon Robert Innes. For the last nine years, I've been the senior chaplain of the Pro Cathedral of Holy Trinity in Brussels. It's been a hugely exciting job. Our church is made up of people from 30 or 40 different nationalities. About a third of our congregation are from Africa. We have everybody from diplomats to refugees. I've had another couple of roles too. I look after our church's relationship with the Belgian state and I've been representing the Archbishop of Canterbury in his relationships with the European institutions. Before we came to Belgium, our family lived in County Durham in North East England for 16 years. There I was involved in theological education and in ministry to former mining villages. I haven't always worked for the church though. I did my first degree actually in engineering and began working life in uh, power stations working with the electricity supply industry. After that I worked as a business consultant for several years before being called to ordination at the age of 30. How do you feel then about the prospect of another change in direction of becoming a diocesan bishop? Well I feel honoured, uh, excited, humbled and not a little daunted. Uh, I have worked in the diocese, of course, and ministered for the last nine years. Uh, I've got uh, plenty of experience of living uh, away from one's home country for a good length of time. And I've been privileged to work in, in Belgium, uh, a country which is at the intersection of two of the big European cultures, the northern Germanic culture and the southern uh, Latin culture. So I've experienced something of that clash of, of linguistic cultures. I'm aware though that our diocese is hugely uh, diverse and varied from north to the south, from the west to the east, and uh, I'm, I'm greatly looking forward to visiting some of those parts of the diocese with which I'm currently less familiar. You've arrived by Eurostar, presumably you'll be very much the Eurostar bishop, the commuting bishop. Well, I like to travel by train wherever I can for ecological reasons, but this is a rather special train service. I remember uh, when it was inaugurated 20 years ago and, um, and just how excited we were uh, at, the, uh, at the physical link between, um, between the mainland continent and, uh, and the United Kingdom. And uh, yes, uh, I will be using the service uh, a, a lot. Um, travelling between my home in Brussels and the diocesan office here in London. And I hope also being a bridge, a physical link, between the church in England and the church on the continent. It is quite a step change though, isn't it? You'll be the first bishop of this diocese to actually be living in the continent of Europe. I'll be uh, continuing to live in Brussels and uh, my office and the office of my chaplain will, uh, will be based there. Uh, I think it's uh, entirely uh, appropriate for a bishop to live within his diocese and I'm uh, delighted to be living in one of the uh, nerve centres uh, and uh, cultural melting pots of, of continental Europe. Brussels of course is well known as a diplomatic uh, and political centre but it's also uh, uh, an important religious centre. The Grand Synagogue of Europe is based there the Conference of European Churches is, is moving its headquarters there and many charitable and parachurch organisations have their coordinating centres based in the city. So when can we formally expect to welcome you as Bishop of the Diocese in Europe? I will be consecrated as a Bishop on Sunday July the 20th in Canterbury Cathedral which 
in many ways is the mother church of the whole Anglican Communion. I'll be taking three or four months to uh, hand over the responsibilities of my current role. I'll be beginning work at the beginning of September and then I expect uh, uh, inauguration ceremonies in, in each of our uh, pro-cathedrals and cathedral in Gibraltar, Malta and Brussels in the course of the uh, early autumn. So I hope many people will have the opportunity to, to come to one of those events. And what's your vision for the diocese, your hopes and prayers? My vision of the diocese is, is of one where in each of our chaplaincies and uh, parishes there is a warm welcome and a real sense of being a spiritual home. I dream of uh, a diocese in which in each place there is a, uh, a sense of worship and sacramental life which generates a real encounter with God and an experience of his love. Places that are genuinely open to God's future for them, willing to take some risks to change. In my dream, people of all backgrounds and cultures are accepted and valued. Children are enabled to belong and to contribute. There's a sense of outreach. Uh, uh, people are growing in their Christian faith uh, and learning better how to express that faith and to share it with others. The church exerts a healing influence on its members and perhaps more widely. And as a result, the church is attractive and probably growing in numbers. There's a huge spiritual challenge. How are you preparing spiritually to become the bishop of the diocese? Becoming a bishop is, is something that nobody could uh, hope to do in their own strength, let alone be bishop of a diocese as big as this one. So I will certainly be praying uh, over the next uh, few months as I anticipate my own consecration, and I would certainly value your prayers for me. I will be absolutely dependent upon God's grace and the energy of the Holy Spirit. So remember me in your prayers as I will be praying systematically for our archdeaconries, parishes and people over these coming months. The new bishop designate has just one more formality to complete on his Eurostar arrival. He heads for passport control. In a diocese and on a continent with many borders, he's looking forward to encouraging his flock in their shared citizenship and the common faith in Christ.